Yo, yo, what is up, people? Welcome back to Neanderthal Fitness and to the Minimalist Corner. Um, quick shout out before I continue. Do you think I should keep this polo shirt or not? This is one of the items that was in the wash when I did my wardrobe downsize, and I was just going to bin it off. Um, but uh, I'm checking it out in the camera, and I'm like, this looks pretty good, right? So um, maybe I'll keep it. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but anyway, on with today's subject, which is how can you be a true minimalist? And by that, I mean a true minimalist is in location independent minimalist. So if you're the kind of person who works online, maybe you're a writer, a creative of some type, like a graphic designer or whatever it may be, but you like to have the freedom to move around. Or even if you don't like, you, not because of your work, you don't have the freedom, but you just like the idea of not being bogged down by things like furniture. How can you live in like live in a, a nice property and be a true minimalist, someone who can fit everything inside their rucksack, everything they own? And to people who already sort of know of this sort of thing, which is probably a lot of people, you might think, oh, that's kind of a bogus tip or whatever. But for anyone who isn't aware of it or just has never genuinely thought about this, then I do think this is a nice and easy tip for you. So you want to live in a comfortable, comfortable life, but you want to be a minimalist, like a true minimalist living with 50 to 100 or less items in your possession in its entirety. Um, but there are two really simple things you can do. One, if you like to rent an entire apartment, you can rent furnished apartments. I mean, that is just psh, problem solved, right? They're ideal for you to just move straight into um, because everything is there already. So you can rent apartments that have all the white goods in the kitchens, they have sofas, they have beds, some of them have wardrobes, chest of drawers, whatever. So all of that belongs to the property uh, or the landlord of the property. You rent all of the contents, the furniture, as well as the place. So you never need buy furniture. And when you move, you don't have to worry about moving it, which let's face it, everybody hates moving furniture, right? packing up the sofa, taping drawers into chest of drawers to take them down the stairs, all of that stuff literally obliterated because all you have to move in is your stuff, your saucepans, your plates, your clothes, your books, whatever, like your personal stuff, your minimalist items moved in and the furniture already belongs there. The only thing to watch out for with that is of course things like security deposits. Make sure that you go through a reputable landlord or letting agent which will store your security deposits separately, securely, and there is a fair process when you move out. Because obviously, like, if you scuff the paint on the wall, you can paint over that. But if you damage, like, a sofa, a chest of drawers or something, they will dock your security deposit for that. And that can obviously end up being quite expensive if you need that deposit to move on to the next place. Um, and the second one is really pretty much the same thing, but I'm talking house shares. So house shares, you don't even need to look for furnished. 90% of house shares will be furnished. So instead of renting a whole apartment for five, six hundred pounds per month, you would rent a room in a house, which will normally be between 250 to 300, maybe 350 per month. But you will normally find that includes council tax, that includes all of your bills. This is obviously based on UK stuff, um, but I'm sure house shares in the US, Canada, Europe, etc., pretty much the same. They include a lot of your bills. Um, along with your rent for literally half what you'd pay for an entire apartment. You rent a room which will normally come with a bed, sometimes they come with a chair or a sofa. They won't come with things like TVs where some furnished apartments will. Um, but obviously if you're renting a furnished apartment with like a widescreen plasma TV, that is going to cost more on the renting side. But house shares are really cheap, inexpensive, and they're a nice way to move into a new area. So say you want to move to a new city, explore this newfound freedom you've got from being a minimalist, you can do so by moving into a house share and you've got a wealth of experience in that city already. You've got people already living there that you can talk to, you can befriend if you want, and they're going to be able to tell you about all the local haunts and everything. So again, no need to buy furniture, much cheaper to move in generally than getting your own apartment. And again, you have the flexibility of living a really comfortable lifestyle um, with, you know, nice furniture, really comfy, expensive sofas, 
um, fancy washing machines, dishwashers if you like that kind of thing, um, without having to sink the money into it. Now, just a quick disclaimer, some people may say that, you know, if you're living with all of that stuff, are you really a true minimalist? And I would say two things to that. The first one is yes, obviously, because we have to remember that minimalism is not poverty. Minimalism is only removing things which do not add to your life. So if you don't want to squat all the time um, and you want to sit on a sofa sometimes, then having a sofa does not mean you're not a minimalist. But certainly not having to move one helps you feel more like a minimalist. Um, and two, yes, perhaps, um, you know, you could say that someone who lives with 10 or 20 items and sleeps on a mat on the floor and doesn't have a bed or a sofa or a TV is more of a minimalist than uh, someone who has those furniture items, whether through rented accommodation included or they bought it themselves and they can't like their sofa and bed among their items. Um, I would say that you can't really put a tag on it. Minimalism is is just a theory. It's a thing that means different stuff to different people. And if you want to take it that step further and only live with 10 items, um, then power to you. I think that's amazing, incredible, and you will experience a peace of mind and lightness from not having any of this stuff because things you don't have, you don't have to worry about, right? But if you do want some of the more modern comforts in life at the same time, then the two tips I gave you, either a house share or renting furnished accommodation, are good starting points. So peace out, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like it, comment down below, subscribe for more, and I'll be seeing all of you guys in the next video.